Ciao, Napoli Nation. What's going on, man? We're back for episode three. And we're going to be going over quite a bit today. And we're trying to get a special guest in here, Oma, Victor's good friend. And we'll be waiting on him to join us soon. So let's get the show on the road. I'm just going to go over what we're going to talk about today. First thing is going to be going over the Salernitana match, doing a post-match review on that. Then we'll We'll bring Omai in hopefully around the end of that. And then we're going to talk about the match against Roma in Napoli, the Derby di Sole. Then we'll get into any other news that's going on right now with Napoli. Talk about city and food like always. Some transfer market stuff to include the brand new goalkeeper that we just signed. And then if time permits, we'll talk about Napoli gear, Napoli drip, what have you. And uh, hey, Mario, how you doing, man? I'm good. A little bit under the weather, but I'm good. Yeah, I can tell, man. That cold is, um, man, the cold's not going away, is it? I don't know what it is. I don't think it's a cold. It's something else. Got an appointment tomorrow, though, so I'll get it checked out. Oh, shit. You better go get that uh, that COVID test done. No, that ain't that. I'm not worried about that bullshit. <laughs> COVID test. I, I, wish, I wish COVID would just freaking go away all the way. You know, I went to Burger King the other night here out in town, and all the employees were wearing a mask, man. I was like, when is this crap going to be over with? But anyway, Not my uh, let's get into the show. What's that? None of my worries. Let yeah, my neither, life. man. All right, well, let's get into the show. All right, uh, let's go over some later time, Mario. So, you know, we didn't really see any huge surprises with the formation or the starters the only thing that I think people were wondering about was who's going to start in that white ring, and and Chucky ended up starting over over Politano. What did you think about the selection of the starters? Did you think Spalletti did did the right thing, and who he had picked to actually start the game? Yeah, I thought he did great. Um, I really liked how he put Elmas on the right wing, and uh, or sorry, left wing, and then he had um, Lozano on the right wing. Uh, we didn't see too much from either of them. But in all honesty, I can't really blame him too much because Salernitana was playing really stubborn defense, uh, just parking the bus the whole game. I mean, we had 75% possession. They had 25. That tells you a lot. We also had a lot of quality possession. It wasn't just garbage. Whenever they had the ball, really, they didn't create too much. They didn't really give Meta too much of a hard time, except for that one block he had in the first half. That was really good. Uh, props to him. He's also been stepping up a lot uh, mentally. Uh, his talent's always been there. You know, uh, We can get into Meta later. I think it's a little uh, bit of a question mark right right now as well because people uh I, I know a lot of them tend to forget but uh a lot of people didn't believe in Medit, you know me being one of them a little bit you know because i never yeah, me doubted too, his yeah. talent but mentally we could all agree that he was he was struggling um, but anyways uh let's talk about lozano over politano actually right now he did start over him this game like we said he would um what do you think about him doing not too much yeah, I mean, he didn't really affect the game too much when it comes to actually creating any chances. Um, but I, I did notice that he was getting some crosses in, and it seemed like he was tuned into playing the game. But he didn't have a big effect on the game like I was hoping he was going to. Mm -hmm. um, but would have Politano had a big effect in the game? I don't know. I mean, I think it's still a 50-50 thing with Spalletti picking on who he's going to actually start. And I, I wasn't upset with Chucky's play, but I wasn't really happy either. It was just a very average game. Right. I just figured he should have done more against a team like Salernitana. You know, he has a lot of speed on him. We, we, we've always known that. Um, he didn't really show nothing. I mean, he had a couple of crosses that were that were all right. But other than that, I didn't really see too much. He played better in the second half, though, even though he, he did get subbed out. But he played much better. Same with Elmas. I think we all had a better second half. I'm, I'm glad that Zombo um, assisted late in the first because that was a really good momentum push for the next half yeah and you mentioned Merritt getting that one stop that stop in the first half where he barely got his fingertips on the ball uh that was crazy uh, if he didn't yeah. get that fingertip that that was going in and that could have completely changed the match one thing yeah. I noticed that uh I don't know it seemed to be just a little bit weird with how Spalletti was approaching the second half is he didn't bring in any subs until around the 80th minute and he ended up with only three subs in the game Crazy. What, do you take do you take anything from that? And and Raspadori didn't get in. Yeah. You know, it, um, it just seemed to be a little bit weird the way that he he ended the game and the subs and all that. What'd you think about all that? 
the only thing I can really like defend him for doing that is uh, we just had so much good going on. You know, we, we didn't really want to change too much because you know when you you change one player, you can change the whole chemistry of, of the team sometimes, depending where the where the player plays at. You know, especially in, in the midfield section. But uh, I don't know. I found it a little irresponsible of him, honestly. Um, especially with the Roma game coming up, you know, we should be resting our players much more. Honestly, if even if it was no. If it was 1-0 at the 80th minute where he finally made some subs, 77 minute, whatever it was, um, I would have still probably kept in a bit more of the players, but I'm making subs regardless at the 70th, 65th minute. You know, someone's got to come out. Uh, Lozano, Elmas, uh, maybe someone out back. Uh, definitely not Rui. He had an amazing game. We'll talk about Rui as well. Um, but I don't know. I just it was, it was It was irresponsible in general. And I've I've I can't remember another match all season where he waited yeah. until making his first sub around the 80th minute, and I don't yeah. think he's ever only had just three subs either. So it was a little weird to me. Um, mm. You know, Cavada not playing in that game. I can't say that I was worried because it was Salernitana, but I felt like we didn't really miss him. Elmas had a pretty good match, and the attack in general seemed to be, you know, they seemed to be operating pretty well. Do you think that? Do you think Cavada was missed? And do you think that this Nets match coming up against Roma, which I've seen that he's going to be playing in, do you think that the team can can play against anybody without Cavada and really adjust to missing him and be okay? Because we got a lot of length um, going until the end of the season still. Yeah, depending on who we're playing, really. Um, obviously, we, we we've shown that we don't need all of our star players against – mid table to lower table teams you know uh we can we can stand our, our ground we have amazing depth but uh we're always going to miss cover out any game that he misses you know uh, that's just common knowledge because he just creates so much he creates he scores he plays back sometimes he can switch from the left to the right i mean the guy is a, an amazing talent um so we are we'll always miss him whenever he's gone uh and then the chemistry between him and oc is undeniable as well he just makes it easier for Osiman, which we love and yeah i mean he's always missed but uh, Elmas did okay. Um, I expected a bit more from him as well. I think the two underwhelming players were him and Lozano. So, you know, and talking about team chemistry, uh, even with Chucky not really making a huge impact on the game, it doesn't really feel like that's causing any disruptions in team chemistry. Do you agree? No, not really. No. Talk no, about we just that have. Our, our weakest point is on that right side, sure. But, I mean, you could honestly but what I'm saying, they're, they're but not what I'm saying it, yeah, What I'm saying with team chemistry, though, is like, so, for example, we saw when D'Lo scored, and we saw how Madia Rui and Zambo celebrated together. When I say team chemistry, I'm talking about just everybody getting along. Do you feel like... Lozano and or Politano and the way that they're not performing is doing anything yeah. to that and at all in the locker room. No, not at all. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think either, man. This is amazing this year. You know, we, we've had the behind the scenes of, of some players whose locker room presence wasn't good. And you know what I'm talking about. We're not going to get into that, but yeah, it's our locker room. This, this season is, is great. I have no worries about anybody in there. We're all respectful to each other. Spalletti as well. You know, we're all good. Yeah. I feel the same way. I really do. Um, I mean, if anything, hopefully at some point, Chucky and or Politano just picks up their game and it just makes us even more stoppable. But going back to team chemistry oh, yeah. a little bit, just in general, what Victor's been doing has been crazy. Mm -hmm. He's been leading more. He's got a goal streak of three games now. And it looks like we've got Oma ready to come in to talk a little bit more about his boy Victor. So let's bring Oma in. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Here I have Oma. And uh, real quick here, we're going to go over the Victor Osiman hot streak. Uh, 13 goals in 15 games, two ass or three assists as well. Tell me more about him, Oma. Well, it keeps getting better, season in, season out. Um, this is what I told Napoli fans when they signed Victor. I said that they bought perhaps one of the best stories that will be written in the annals of Napoli Football Club. And he's, he's playing out the way I said it. And that's why more people love me in Napoli. I get a lot of free <laughs> pizzas. I get a lot of free meals, free bills. Anytime I go to Napoli, 
except that you guys have not played your part. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I mean, he's, he's a young guy who always wants to get better. He, 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 he he's a fighter. He always wants to prove some people wrong. He's yeah. a guy who comes from a background where nobody gave him a chance, where he was written off. He said to me in an interview we did the last time that some people set a target for him and he's happy he shattered that he's setting records. The first Nigerian to score double digits in Italian football and might be the first African to win the Capo or Camo Canonieri. Um, Capo Canieri. Yeah. Martins, Capo mm -hmm. Canieri. Obafemi Martins used to hold the record of the highest goal scoring Nigerian player in Italy who used to play for Inter Milan. We didn't know that Victor would be the guy to break all his records. He's broken yeah. those records, he's setting new records. It's incredible. And despite injuries, despite all of those, all those um, roadblocks, Victor has still gone on to score more than any striker in the Italian league. Yeah. Imagine if he wasn't injured. Imagine if yeah. he didn't have shoulder injury the year before all those problems while he was still integrating into life and football in Italy. Victor would have been on a beautiful number as we speak. Yeah. Nonetheless, yeah. he's still doing fantastically well. And that's the sort of player he is. And the interesting thing also is that he keeps getting better in areas where he was deficient. Perhaps tactically before now, people would say, oh, Victor might not be the guy good on the ball might not be good on one-on-one -on -one situation. He will not get himself out of trouble in tight corners. Mm -hmm. But all of that is, seems to be doing them right now. And that is the type of player he is. He keeps getting better and better. He shows you that he puts in a lot of work in his craft. And that yeah. is reflected on his performance overall. He's not just scoring goals. His work rate is humongously amazing. Victor is everywhere. Victor is... His work rate is crazy. And that's the type of energy that he brings to the team. And that's why you see in his absence, you feel it. I said it before. I said Napoli has strikers like Diego, uh, I said Diego Simeone, <laughs> Giovanni Simeone, uh, Raspadori and, and the likes, who without the team performing cannot on their own create any magic. With due respect to them. But in Victor, you have a player who can do the unthinkable, who can mm. rally the troops to keep going, yep. who can deliver when you least expect. Look at the goal against Roma in Rome. After missing mm. a good chance, he actually scored a much more difficult one from, a, from an acute angle. I hope my, my, my um, calculation is right. From an acute angle, after putting himself in front of um, 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 Smalling, Mm -hmm. The ball just went into the net. Even the, the Roman defender didn't expect that to happen. That is the type of magic that Victor brings. And he's already writing himself his name in gold in the history of Napoli Football Club. Yeah, and Oma mentioning that goal against Roma, he had yes. something fairly similar that was just barely offside for Salini Tana. I mean, okay. for me... He was the obvious man of the match. But I wanted to ask you something real quick about his game against Juve. So do you think that his performance against Juve has now lifted that, that weight off of his shoulders, that now he can perform in the big matches against the big clubs? He can play and score. He's played well, very consistently, but he hasn't scored a lot. Now he can score a brace against Juve. Do you think that he'll be more consistent in scoring goals in the big matches now? I think that the Juve game was actually a consolidation on the match against Roma. That was his first goal against a top Serie A side. And I said to him after that game, I said, this goal against Roma is very significant for your time at Napoli because people have said before now that you've not scored against a big Italian league side, which was true even though it was just a coincidence, not like he didn't have the capacity. Agreed. But obviously, they were true, and you must have read, and, and somehow, somewhere, they get into your head, and you would have said to yourself, I need to do this, because we are humans. And you've done it now 
against Roma at the Stadio Olimpico in a very big derby, this will take a bit of burden off your shoulders and you begin to relax in bigger games. I saw you against Inter where you had a face and facial injury. It wasn't a good game even before the injury. I saw you against Roma before when you got a red card. I saw you <laughs> against big opponents. How they were able to checkmate you playing on your on your um, temperament. Yeah. These big teams are sound. They're not only sound on the pitch. They also yeah. come with the antics. They know how to get players on their nerves and get them out and get them psychologically deranged so they don't give their best. So that goal against Roma will do a lot for your confidence. It's very significant. Significant. I beg your pardon, my French accent trying to take over. It's very <laughs> fundamental in what you will do going forward. And the one against Juve was just a reflection or a confirmation of what I told him after scoring against Roma. He was very mm-hmm. calm against Juve. He was in control. He scored a breeze and he could have scored a hat trick if that ball didn't hit yeah. the woodwork. He could have scored a hat trick and that would have been absolutely incredible. No disrespect to, to, to any other striker at Napoli. What Victor brings is, is special. Yeah, so going off what you said, I think it's very underappreciated, actually, that uh, we don't talk about his his mental growth, the, the yeah. temperament that, that you're mentioning. It got him in trouble a lot last season, yeah. right? <laughs> Understandably so. They were really annoying him, you know, physically hurting yeah. him, mentally. It was, it was all happening, so I completely understand. But this season, what I love about Victor is that he still comes with that same passion, you know? All that temperament, all that frustration, it's its gone. Yeah. You'll see him obviously get frustrated at times, but it's normal. It's normal frustration. It isn't anything that'll yeah. that'll that'll mess up your your friend's uh, 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 thoughts about you, you know, because, you know, when you are a, a team player, the chemistry that it brings is ridiculous, man. And I think that he is the top of our chemistry tree. He's of that course. guy up there. Mm. Of course, I, I completely agree with you. And, and like I said, it's not just about the scoring. It's about his work rate. It's about his energy. Yep. It's about his, his, his character. He has a very strong character. <laughs> very. I love and it. That's what you <laughs> no, see on the pit. Go on, yeah. go on. One of, the, one of the things that I've noticed about him when you talk about character is the way that he interacts with fans when the camera's off. I've seen it before. And you can tell that he genuinely enjoys spending time making fans happy and that's a good feeling man because it's it's not you don't see that every day Napoli's had Absolutely. some players in the past that that really didn't know what it meant to to actually have the interaction with the fans and be genuine about it so it's it's nice to see that and and by doing that he's leading by example and i think that's exactly. extremely important for for not only team chemistry but for just the atmosphere of the city and the fans that are behind the team. If one of their best players is is like that with the fans, I think it makes a big difference on everything that's going on in the locker room also. I think that's very special because the fans are a very special part of this Napoli football club. I've been to Napoli a, lot, a couple of times and I, I cannot think about a group of fans in Europe who are special as Napoli. <laughs> I, I think that sometimes it's a bit over the top, but hey, that's the part. <laughs> that's the love. Hey, man, it, for Napolitani, it's not only about culture being over the top, man. They go over the top yeah. with everything pretty much. So, yeah, well, so and, I, and I love that about them. I know, I know, but but, but if you're genuine, it's genuine. That's what people, that's how it is. Of course, that's yeah. all that matters. Genuine, Authenticity, genuine. Yeah. yep. I'm, I'm like that yep, as well. Yep. I'm passionate about what I do. Sometimes people say the same thing about me, but hey, I can't change it. I'd rather be over the top <laughs> than, to be, and than be less passionate. Of course. Because I believe that yeah. if you're not passionate yeah. about something that you are not fit to leave. You'll not succeed. Yeah. You'll not succeed, you know? Yeah. So yeah. so I think that's that's the thing I like about them, and that's the thing I have in common with them. The energy, the passion, the love, and the enthusiasm. My first time at that stadium was the game against Liverpool, you know? And wow. <laughs> yes, that was my first time there. It's and, a good first game. Yes, and even after seeing the environment, the stadium is, I was a bit shocked because I've never been to any stadium in Europe as sorry to say as ugly as that stadium from the outside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh I boy. Agree. Yeah. 
Oh yeah. I'm a yep. guy who I've seen the best stadiums in Europe. I've been to every superb stadium in Europe. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So when I got to Napoli, I was expecting something similar to what I'm used to. Yeah. So I was shocked when I saw the stadium from out and I'm like, this is me. <laughs> Much Graffiti on the walls. Yeah. Former Sao Paulo, now Diego Amato, <laughs> Stadium. I was mm. like, okay, let's see what happens inside. When I got inside, I was completely blown away by yeah. the the atmosphere, the lights, the fans, the the energy and the vociferousness of the fans. I got goosebumps. Immediately, yeah, the Champions League anthem was sung. The the loud roar that followed it was touching. Up till now, I have that video on my YouTube channel, and it's doing very well. About that, I'm any money from that video actually. And anytime I watch, anytime I'm, I'm on the plane, what I do is when I'm bored, I just watch all my old videos to get busy. <laughs> you know, look at my nice pictures and say to myself, "Wow, you had a great life. You were in this country, you were in that hotel. You know, just uh -huh. to keep yourself going in a plane because I get very bored in planes. I hate yeah, yeah. sitting on a plane." So I try, and I'm not a guy who watches a lot of movies, so I just try to do something on my phone, look back at live and where I've been to, you know. Yeah. When I watch this video, I guess goosebumps. It's incredible. And that is what I like about Napoli fans. And that is also why maybe the god of soccer wants to reward them with the Scudotto. Because they deserve something. How can such a beautiful set of fans? Yes. I've not seen this, this, this in 30 <laughs> years. I can, I can tell you that maybe... Maybe ninety percent of this current generation have not ever seen this video. It's crazy because yeah. most of these people are young people. Yeah, are young people, so they deserve it. I think they deserve it. I cannot wait for when this will happen. I will be. I will come and immerse myself in Napoli till the euphoria goes down. <laughs> <laughs> You know, talking about the emotion that you felt with that first game that you went to was a Champions League yeah. game, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and my son Mario, our first Champions League game was against Chelsea way back in 2012. I remember when they that game. First, when they first got back into Champions League yeah. and our boy Posha Levetsi had a brace in that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, you talking like you just did reminded the emotion that I had for that first yeah. game. I'm in the really Champions right. League, and yeah, yeah you, you got you gave me goosebumps just talking about how you got goosebumps, man. It makes me feel really Amazing. good that Amazing. that you were able to experience your first game like that. That's awesome. Uh, but to get to back on the Silver and Tana game, uh, so yeah. like my man of the match absolutely was Victor just because of the impact mm -hmm. he had on the game, and he honestly he really had two goals because that one goal was just barely off sides, and it was a crazy yeah. goal, and he was he had a positive effect on the entire game. And then, like, for my flop of the match, bl 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 I really bl want... Blame it on Kachopoli. Kachopoli. I mean, for me, my man of the match was... Or my flop of the match was uh, was Chucky, only because I expected... Well, not only, but I really want him to do more. He has the ability to have more of an effect on the game, and I yeah. thought that this was going to be a game where he really took advantage of his opposition, and he just he didn't have an effect on the game. Mario, what what are you thinking when it comes to your man of the match and your flop of the match in that game? I mean, if we're being realistic, Aussie man's gonna be the man of the match. But uh, I'm gonna switch things up a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna go okay. Mario Rui. Uh, okay. Rui displayed once again that he is part of our attack. Uh, if you guys realize, he actually assisted Zambo on his assist to Aussie man. You know, he set man. that up right there, a little triangle pass, one two one. Uh, that was beautiful. He was always crossing. His crosses looked way better than any of our left or right wings crosses. Uh, defensively, he was very consistent. He let nobody run by. I feel like Kim had a bit of a struggle de uh, game defensively. I'm not going to make him the flop of the match, so I'm going to get into that right now. Um, for me, that's going to be Zielinski. Uh, another game of him just being average. Uh, it's once again, I feel like it's proving my, my standing on him leaving this summer. I think he's going to be one of the departures that we have, especially with our depth at uh, midfield. Uh, if he doesn't start showing me a little bit more, I feel like we might see some Raspadori action, you know, taking his spot. I don't know because we just got him recently as well. We need to start getting him involved. Uh, he's not taking Osiman's number nine spot, so that's already out the books. Um, left and right wing, I feel like we'll have someone else there. We're going to bring in some some people as well that I'm looking at. Uh, but I think Raspadori would succeed on that left middle cam spot. And Oma, sorry, what do you think is the man of the match or the flop of the match? 
Victor Simon, of course. <laughs> <laughs> like I said to you before we started, it's difficult to look beyond him because, I mean, he, what he brings, he returns, you know, to the team after not starting against um, um, Cremonende, right? And he quickly stamps his, his authority on the game. And yeah. that's why I, I like to go with Victor, you know. Um, it's 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 it, it's special, it's special. And and thought of the game, I mean, I I like to look at Mario Rui, like you said, he's he's a brilliant player. I like yeah. his, his 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 understanding his of the game. Is 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 very intelligent, and you 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 like sometimes players like that who he might not have the energy of Victor, but he brings something different and that's what like, we talk about like a charisma variety. right correct variety yeah. is, is Sima. exactly Sima. Yeah. <laughs> exactly variety is the spice of life you know and he brings that to the team and that's why napoli is also a very interesting team you have you have different shades of of, of quality players yeah. doing special things in different forms and that's that's very special. One thing also we don't talk about enough, or well, I think that, or oh, one guy nobody is talking about enough is Sambo Frank and Gisa. He's like a bulldozer. A bulldozer, yeah. a bulldozer clears, for example, an entire community and makes it beautiful. Nobody remembers the bulldozer. Everybody says, "Wow, that mm -hmm. house has become beautiful." Nobody remembers the bulldozer that did the renovation work and all of that. Zambo is that type of a player. He's yep. very, very effective for Napoli. He's strong. His position in the midfield is very, very key. And he's, he's, he's connecting both the defense and the attack very well and defending also very well. He's, 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 he's an amazing player. You know, except that maybe sometimes you don't have him doing that for full 90 minutes. Sometimes he just slips off and then he has to go <laughs> off all the time for Doc Bele. Like, he's already planned before the game. <laughs> You get the feeling that he doesn't go the, 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 the whole hog, which is mm. something perhaps that he needs to work on, but generally he's one guy nobody talking enough about or talking so, about enough. Yeah. Hey, hey, Oma, we were talking a little bit before we actually started uh, just uh, bringing you into the video, right? And um, yes, yes, yes. we were mentioning who you thought your flop of the match was, and I laughed for like 10 minutes. Can you repeat who your flop of the match was in that game, please? The Salatana game. Yeah, yeah. Remember what yeah. you said? Oh, 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 no, no, no. You said, no, man of the match. I said you, you went to maybe. Oh, you were saying Juve was the man of the match. Yeah, he got the <laughs> 15 times over the man of the match. Crazy, man. <laughs> can, I say, can, I say, can I say something? Yeah. The point deduction is just an excuse for Juventus. They will not have a good excuse. Otherwise, without the point deduction, Juventus will not catch Napoli. Forget it. No, not even. They can make a they can make a point for top four, but Scudetto, no. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. They're not good enough. They're not. Yeah, you can't lose to Napoli five one at home and, and then try to. Yeah, <laughs> no. I will. I will sack everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's ridiculous. Fact, I'm sorry. They should all go for. They should all go on that investigation for what they have done to themselves. In fact, I, <laughs> Juventus is a disgrace to Italian football. Actually, I told this people that the they have no time. shame. No, this is not the first time. Oh. In fact, they give Italian football and Italy generally a bad reputation because yeah. Italy already has a dented image. I hope you know that. Yeah, oh yeah. In oh, Africa, yeah. in Africa, we have Islam. We always call bad people Italian mafia. If you're <laughs> if you're a member of a group or a gang, we say, "Ah, this guy is a member of the Italian mafia." Wow. Because that's what we. That's how we know Italy. Mm. Yeah. You know, and I mean, for me, oh my man. I really believe that the the only way to really send the right message and get Serie A back to where it needs to be, just like when they were recovering when Calciopoli happened, is to relegate them to Serie A B. Get them out of yes. the league. Yes. Let them really understand the negative effect that they're making on the league. Of course. And make them work to get back to Serie A. No, no, you take know? them to Serie A. Let them play against <laughs> 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 my goodness, man. Well, Omar, you mentioned 
you mentioned a couple of things about your visit to Napoli, and I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions. So, okay. are we, we, we're like, we recording? Yeah, yeah, we're recording, but we're well, not all live. All these things are not going on. All these things are not going on. No, no, no. He's going to no, edit stuff cut. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But okay. I, I wanted to ask you a couple of things. So I've noticed some of the things that you put on Twitter and stuff about the things that you're doing in Napoli and the people you're seeing and the good weather and all that. But I wanted to ask you, like, do you do you see some similarities between Napolitani and, and Nigerians? Is there some things that you see that is similar? Yeah. Of course, of course. The 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 personality, you see, the way they live is very similar to Nigeria. The I I see that they live in communism. They, they like to enjoy themselves. They like to have fun. Yes. This is typical mm. Nigeria. This is typically Nigerian. Nigerians like to enjoy. Nigerians are funny people. Napolitans are funny people. Nigerians like to dance. Napolitans like to enjoy. They like to dance. Napolitans are very hospitable. Nigerians are very hospitable. Yeah. Napolitans are opportunistic. Nigerians are opportunistic. <laughs> <laughs> they, they want you, if they see you have what they want, they give you everything. They are nice to you to get it. Nigerians yeah. do it a lot. So I'm playing along because we are humans. Human, the human nature is like that. So let's forget about Napoli especially. Every human being is selfish in some way. So I don't think it's a bad thing if they give you what they want. I mean, what you want for them to get what you, they want from you is normal. It's actually better than not giving me what I want, but wanting to take what I have. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> so of course. there's a lot of similarities. And the way the city is structured, I see that there's a lot of lawlessness as well, which is also similar to Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> it's something that I connect with easily. I sit down in a car in Napoli because I live in Germany. I want to fasten my, fasten my seatbelt. And they're saying, don't worry. And I'm like, wow, feels good to see that I can sit in a car and not fasten my seatbelt. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, That's funny. So, yeah, it... You know, it's, there's a very, very super connection between the two, the two cities. That's why yeah, I've seen that... them. Yeah, I, I got you. And I've I seen that um, that you're loving the weather too, right? Like Absolutely. almost every time but, but, you post but, but, something, but, 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 but the sunlight the right is now. shining down on your phone. <laughs> yes, but not the weather right now. I hear the weather is bad now. It's probably raining a lot, yeah. super cold. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, but I love it, the weather. It, the... Imagine in Napoli in January, I was, I was enjoying the sun in the morning up to 2 p.m. You can still enjoy the sun in January. That is yep. special. That is very, very special. I, I have special connection to Napoli. I'm, I, <laughs> I hope I can be able to, to live there more and more and more as time goes on. Yeah. Yes. Now, one other thing I was curious about, um, there's, a, uh, there's a rapper that made a yeah. rap song about yeah. Victor. And yeah. I, I just think you've interacted with him quite a little bit. Uh, okay. Tell us about that story a little bit. I think he was the steward that that met with Correct. Victor after the Roma game and Correct. got in a little Correct. bit of trouble and stuff like that. But tell Correct. us more about that, man. Okay, in, in Rome, after the game against AS Roma, I was talking with Victor on the phone and he said, go to where our team bus is and wait for me there. I'll see you there when I come back, when I get into the bus. So I went there. Of course, that's a restricted area, but I was able to get there showing them my conversation with Victor, that I'm Victor's friend, I need to see him. So. I got to a particular where there's a gate. The bus was inside like a compound. So this boy was one of the stewards, you know, protecting or guarding that, that, that particular spot. So I went to him, I said, I'm Victor Simon's friend. I'm coming here to see him. So I want to stand in front of this place. When he's coming, he will see me. So he said, oh, you're Victor Simon's friend? Wow, Victor is my idol. Always wanted to meet him. I know he's here, but I cannot meet him myself. Can you help me meet with him? I said, why not? He was surprised. I said, sure, I can do that. But I hope it's not going to be a problem for you. You are supposed to be working. He said he doesn't care. <laughs> he just makes sure he meets Victor. I said, if you don't care, no problem. <laughs> yeah, then you lose your job. 
know? So he, then he asked me for a, for a selfie. He took a selfie. He obviously had been following me on, on Instagram, but he didn't know it was me. Because of mm. my my work during Victor's transfer, I don't know if you knew me then. During no. Victor's transfer, I was like, I would not say I was like Fabrizio Romano because I don't think I'm Fabrizio. I'm Omar Katsuba, he's Fabrizio. But let me say <laughs> I was like Fabrizio because that's his expertise. Mm-hmm. Tweeting transfer. So I was mm-hmm. the guy who was telling the only truth. The only, I mean, the only guy who was telling the truth. So at that period, mm-hmm. I was quite popular around Napoli with the journalists, everyone, because they said there's one guy tweeting about Victor's coming to Napoli and he's telling us that Victor will come to Napoli that we should not bother. That Victor I had done his that. Medical. Yeah. Yes, I said that I I tweeted that Victor had done his medical in Rome. Hmm. People didn't believe because he snuck uh, into into the hospital at night. Medical, nobody knew it. You know, that's awesome. I tweeted, and everything I tweeted became confirmed, and they realized that this guy was the guy, not Fabrizio. Fabrizio had nothing because it was agreed between me and Victor. Mm-hmm. Nobody knows anything. Don't worry, he can find out, but he will not get anything. You know, so. He told me and then he posted it and he wanted to tag me on Instagram. He said, Oh, you are over. I said, Yes. He was very excited. Victor came. I said, Victor, this guy, he said he's your idol. Victor sat down with him. We were chatting like friends. The boy was blown away. His hands were shaking and all of that. And then <laughs> the, the boss, the lady who was like the boss, came to us and said, Ah, oh, no, 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 no. He should pull off his vest. He's fired. And Victor was trying to explain to her that no, 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 I asked him to come to me. No, you don't do that. No, nah, she didn't listen to Victor because communication problems, she was speaking Italian. I said, hey, mm. why are you doing that? What's wrong? He he wanted to meet Victor. Victor said, no problem, you can come to me. Mm. She didn't listen, but the world was very excited to admit Victor. He said, not care, took pictures and, and then went to him. And then it, it became viral news was everywhere and there was this popular italian platform i don't know yellow something yellow or whatever they call it this big platform in italy they did a, an investigative report on it he became very big and you know i told him okay what we'll do for you i'll make sure you meet victor you get a share he met victor at the training ground got a shirt from victor and since then you know he's been more like a a young friend he's so much in love with victor and then he did a rap song <laughs> You know, that's it. <laughs> Her rap song is fire, man. I love that song. It's Thank real. You. It's got that real raw sound to it, you know. Yes, so yes, it's, yes. And the boy, yeah. the boy is a, is a real. You say, I like him because he's a he's a strong guy. He looks yeah. like a, a young man who has something to prove to the world. I like his. You look in his eyes, you can see that he's got fire inside of him. Yeah, you know, it's it's that type of a boy, and you know, he has African roots. His father is from Ethiopia. That's awesome. Okay. Yes. Wow. Yes. Huh. All right. Well, um, you know, we do have to play Roma again, but at home. And let's talk about that a little bit. So okay. it looks like Cavada is is all recovered from the – he had some type of illness or something like that. It looks like he is going to be available, so he should be starting in that game. Good One of the other thing that's going on with that game is uh, Kim is on his fourth yellow. So what do you think about the effect on the game that, I mean, will there be an effect on the game when it comes to Kim being on his fourth yellow? And do you think Kavada is going to be able to have an impact on the game after being out for one game? Um, I think, of course, Clara, Clara you mean Clara right? Yeah. Oh, man. I'm not going to try to say it perfect. Cavaraskelia. There you go. I'll leave that to my son, man. My, yes. my son Mario's got all the pronunciations down. That, that, that's, you know, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's, that's a good trait of a broadcaster. Cavaraskelia. <laughs> Quara, Cavaraskelia. Thank you. Cavaraskelia is also a very pivotal player for Napoli. You can see his numbers, his goals, contribution. He scored a couple of goals. He's made a lot of assists as well. And that is very, 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 very amazing. His 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 vision is is top. His his skill level is is fantastic. His 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 ball holding ability and of course those splitting passes he gives, you you can't rule them out. And that is impact on its own. When that kind of a player is not playing, you feel it. 
player like Victor constantly needs a player like that to put him in the right positions, to put him. Exactly. You know, Victor can pick up those spaces. Kwana can throw in the passes. That is the combination that they built. You need that going. Against Roma, AS Roma so far to me, big teams has been the, okay, apart from Inter, that have given Napoli a tough challenge. Yeah. No, I agree. Be, Roma is in. Yes, yes, it, yes. Roma's in really good form. I mean, maybe yes. some of the best form in the league right now with yes. Inter and Milan dropping off, and they're going to be hungry. They're in oh. Champions League qualification now, and they're yes. going to want to yes. keep doing that. You know, one of the things that I noticed when I looked at the table the other day that I didn't realize until I was really looking at it with Juve's deduction in points, they've dropped all the way down to mid-table. And after that 3-3 tie against Atalanta, Napoli is now holds the best goals allowed. They're the best defense. So they're the best defense, they're the best offense. Mm -hmm. And I think that they know that and they're going to be ready for Roma. But Roma's coming. Roma yes. is going to come to play that game. And Napoli is going to be ready. But I'm looking forward to seeing how they actually react to Roma coming on that pitch and wanting to win the game. What do you think yes. about that, Mario? Do you think that? Do you think it's going to be a difficult game? Do you think Roma is going to be ready? Or oh yeah, uh, it'll be difficult. It's always going to be difficult regardless because it's Roma. It's the Derby del, del Sud, you know. That's the Roma. Uh, they also see Lazio performing very well. That's that's their Derby friend del Sole. Derby del, Derby del Sole. Derby del Sole. Yeah, del it should Sole, be yeah. Sud though. We 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 run the south. But uh, I'm not going to get into that. Anyways, uh, Lazio are also playing amazing. Uh, Roma does not like Lazio. We all know this. Uh, they also are in second place right now, which is crazy to think about, man. Uh, so Roma will Lazio, definitely come. Lazio in second or, place? Yeah, ahead of Milan, wow. right? Yep. Wow. No, no, no. Sure. I th no, they're one point behind Milan. One I just looked at it okay. earlier okay. today. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think place, actually right? third, fourth, and fifth are all tied on points. Wow. But, uh, so you can change okay, yeah. yeah. So this yeah. is going to be even more pressure just for all the teams that are there. And Roma, they 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 exemplify talent. You know, Dybala is good. Abraham is good. Pellegrini is good. They have talent. Um, mm -hmm. I think it'll end up being a 2-1 scoreline. You know, I have Osiman getting his goal again against Roma in the mm -hmm. same fashion, you know, dominating, manhandling all them back there. Uh, I also have Rui as the uh, surprise mm -hmm. goal. I'm going to say this every time at home until he scores. He's going to get one with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also have Abraham. He scored last week against Spezia. Uh, I have him coming in at, on a hot streak as well. A lot of people are coming in on like a little hot streak. Uh, Lukeman as well. I want to give a special shout out to as well, man. Top, uh, top. 11 top. goals in 18 games. That's nothing to top. sleep on. Atalanta top. is also a team full of attacking talent. So just for him to get that many goals is good. Uh, I'm, I'm just very surprised with how much but talent not, we not, have. Not yourself, not yourself, Victor, though. No, 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 no. Victor, stay behind Victor. Yes, yes, yes. No, he. I don't think he's going to pass that Victor. I see Victor scoring twenty plus goals easily this this season. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, uh, it's a two one scoreline for me. Roma, what do you think? The, can you want to predict I, the the result, man? I I, I go with with Mario. I sign on with Mario two one because Roma will be difficult. Roma is a difficult side, and they they're improving. Um, they've got a couple of very brilliant players as well, and. It, it's going to be an interesting game. It's going to be an interesting game. Like I said, that's one team that has given Napoli a good fight this season. I saw the game in Rome. It will be almost the same in, in Naples. It will be tough. It will be tough. Uh, but I see Napoli winning with players like Victor, with Quaraskela returning. He will bring a lot to the team because, like I said already, he will bring something very special. And with Victor going forward, Victor is very, very energized right now. He's very, very fired up. It's a good time for him. And I hope that that, that form continues. He will continue against Roma. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm with you on the, uh, the actual result. I think it's going to be about a 2-1 scoreline. And like Mario said, um, how can you not pick Victor to score a goal mm -hmm. in every game? So I've got Victor scoring. Um, I would love to see Mario Rui score. I'm going to be at that game. And if he scores, the stadium will be shut down. Like the lights will go out. You know what I mean? So I hope Mario's right. I don't think he's going to score. I think somebody like Zelensky who needs to get back on track is going to be motivated to 
to prove that he can still give us what we need when we need it. So I think he's going to have a good game, and I'm expecting him to get the second goal. So, I mean, we all agree on the result. We all think yeah. that it's not going to be a very easy game. And it's an opportunity, I think, for Napoli really to – I mean, how many times do they need to put a stamp on how good they are? But this is another opportunity because Roma's in form, and I think they take I, care of business. I think the only place where they have to prove that they are good is in the Champions League. We have dominated yeah. this year already. I, I mean, they have nothing to prove, you know. But the only thing, though, is that right now, Roma has the support of the entire league. AC Milan, Inter Milan, they are all supporting Roma. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they need Napoli to drop some points to have some hopes. At yeah, least. yeah. <laughs> because the difference now is ten points. So if they lose seven, okay, we have hope. It's seven points. If they come to us, we we'll, we'll beat them. He goes to four points, and then we'll fight to finish. Because um, I think Napoli will still go to Milan, right? For, for AC Milan. Uh, we have them at 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 home. We beat them two one over there. And Inter already done. Yep. Uh, Defeated. Inter is still coming, right? All we have is Juventus away. We have Roma home, Lazio home, Milan home, Atalanta. What? Home. What is Juventus? What is Juventus away? They're <laughs> shit. That game doesn't mean <laughs> anything. I'm just saying. I yeah. mean, we don't even need to care about that anymore. <laughs> exactly. You know? But, but I mean, that's a good feeling, issues. isn't it? Teams that look at us problems, you know, they <laughs> might still have issues. Still coming to Naples. Inter comes so, to so, yeah. Okay. Inter, yeah. Milan, Lazio, mm -hmm. uh, Atalanta, they also need to come to our yeah. house and play, though. So mm -hmm. being 12 and points we, up yeah. on the competition, for me, 12 points. it's not 12 points, man. We're, wow. we're four wow. matches up wow. on, on Milan. Let's get back into um, just talking about uh, your times in Napoli and everything. And, yes, and usually yes. on the show, I always go over – you know, cities that um, that I've been able to visit for, you know, okay. the, the past week or so and food and stuff. So, listen, I want to know if you have a favorite place in Napoli already to get something to eat. Ah, oh, favorite place to get something to eat. Well, no, to be honest. Um, well, I'm going to help you with that. When next I come, I'll be very glad. I'm gonna help yeah. you, man. I got you. I'll, I'll I got you. Happy. So, I'll so do happy. you because like I, hamburgers? Do you like hamburgers? Of course, yes. I, I'm from Hamburg. <laughs> <laughs> There's a hamburger Hamburg. spot. Have you been? Have you been down to the waterfront in Mergelina and just seen that area and all that? No. Maybe I've been to. Where the, I don't know. I've been to. I've been to Vomero, I've been to Posilipo, I've been to Vesuvio. So Posilipo is been... Pos Posilipo is up on the hill from Mergelina. So as you go up to Posilipo, you ah, actually go through Mergelina. I know There's a hamburger I spot. Yes. Mergelina is not far from my hotel, the Paradiso Hotel, where I stayed a couple of yeah. times. Mergelina mm -hmm. is okay, like 10 okay. minutes away from there. I can walk from my mm -hmm. hotel to Mergelina. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Exactly. There, yeah. There's a hamburger spot called uh, 50 Panino, and it's ran oh, okay. by the same dude that runs the, the 50 Calo Pizzeria in Mergelina. And I oh, ate there for the cool. first time a few weeks back, and uh, I'm going to I'm gonna go back there when I go back, and uh, I can't wait to have a burger there. So if you want a good burger, that's the place to go to. And when you're in Napoli next, man, just let me know, and, and we can chill and chow down on a burger. But uh, – be, I'm gonna help you with finding a, I'm gonna help you find a favorite place, man. Maybe a favorite pizzeria because I know you'd be loving some pizza already. Yes, yes, that would be amazing. I have a friend in Napoli who actually lives in Angelina, so that would be great to 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 find out that there's a spot there that that is good to to get some food. But one thing I wanted to mention, just so that people know it's out there, um, the Forza Napoli podcast has a website called Forza Napoli Press. And so okay. he just puts a lot of stories in there, talks about the games and all that. And everybody out there in Napoli Nation, I have a little blog that I do called Palone Pete's. And it's it's okay. just something where I talk about the games that I've been to and some of the places that I've been to go get something to eat. So you guys should check it out. I think you'll like it. Um, that's but that's, a, get great, back that's in. a great idea. That's a great idea yeah. because travel and football, they go on and on. They do. They do. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, to get back into a little bit more about Victor, 
and the transfer market and the rumors uh, that we see all the time. Every year yes. we see the rumors yes. about the best Napoli players being sold and wanting to go somewhere yes. else and all that. Can you tell me a couple of things about Victor and the rumors? So number one, what do you think his worth is going to be at the end of the season? And then if he does negotiate extending his contract, what do you think is a fair salary for him to earn from Napoli if he gets an extension? Uh, to start with, we have to be honest with ourselves. <laughs> if Victor wanted to renew the contract, would have done it since. No. <laughs> They've done like this. Why would they not do their best player? So you can tell that there's complications there, right? Mm-hmm. They could be waiting until the summer, though, right? Why? When the contract is expiring, you don't wait for you don't wait that long for a contract that is one year left. Twenty twenty-five, right? Or twenty twenty-four? I can't remember exactly. I think it's one more year. I don't know if I'm correct. He signed a five-year. I think year you contract. are right. I, I think he has one more year after this year on his contract. Yeah. Normally, normally by now you would have done the renewal. You know, not the Napoli way. Of course. Way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, ADL's always yeah. been like this, though, man. A- ADL yeah. is stubborn. Yeah. He 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 doesn't really just he. The negotiation process with ADL has never been something that's smooth. But I mean, yeah. for me, for me, I still think that there can be work done there. But I think Victor deserves to be respected, especially if they win the Scudetto. What do you think Victor would be satisfied with when it comes to a salary if he gets an extension? Um, say it again 10 million a year yes after time. yeah 10 million a year that's fair <laughs> it's, it's not saying we can afford that but that's fair it's currently on something around half of that yeah like 4.5 yeah, right. i think Thank right you. now yes, yes, 4.5 yes, 5, yes, 5. Mm-hmm. yes, yes. i think so, the yes. highest paid player that napoli's ever had is uh koulibaly at like six and a half do you think like five and a half right uh, I think Lozano might be getting somewhere around that four and a half to five range, oh. but Koulibaly yeah. definitely was making more than six, and I think he was the highest paid ever. Mm-hmm. Do you think that it's possible that if if ADL goes just above that and he makes Victor the highest paid player for Napoli, even if it's not right near that 10, like what if it's about seven or eight? Do you think he would consider that? Maybe with some no. bonuses or something like that in it? No, because he will get more no. than that. Somewhere outside okay. of Napoli, somewhere even bigger. Yeah. Okay. You know, you know the yeah. you know the names of clubs that have been mentioned: Manchester United, yeah. Chelsea. With all due respect, this these are dream clubs for every young black African player. One because these are clubs very popular in Nigeria. No. You know that sometimes the club you play for also leads to your popularity in your home country. Yeah. Nigeria, but man, London. The UK, it rains every day. There ain't no sun <laughs> over there. 20 million he can't get... annum, I want to leave the <laughs> <laughs> He can't get no good pizza, no good coffee. The the women are fire in Italy and they're not over there. I mean, come on, man. He, all the stuff that he's going to be missing, man. Bro, with 20 million euro per annum, I'll be selling, I'll be selling, baby. <laughs> <laughs> How much do you think his transfer value will be at the end of the year? Okay, good. I mean, to be to 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 exaggerate, one fifty, but to be realistic, hundred. Um, two hundred. Yes, on, not two hundred. Hundred. Oh, one hundred. Okay. Yes, I say. I mean, to exaggerate, I would say one fifty, but to okay. be realistic, hundred. Um, I got you. Because, I mean, yes. Sometimes, whether I would like it or not, the nationality of the player also has an effect on the value of the player. The continent, no African player has ever been bought even for 100 million till today. If wow. I'm making any mistake, please remind me. But you I see Brazilian know. players who are not even in the same level with the African player going for 100. Or a British ball or a white. Sorry to use this color. Color. No, color. yeah, it, it makes know? sense. These things happen, you know. So it might be a problem, you know. 
because he's not Brazilian, because he's not uh, German, he's not English, he's not Spanish, he's not French. Yeah. Even if he's French, he can be a black French, but if his passport is the African passport, then they start to undervalue the player. We have yeah. seen some average French black boys being sold for 100 million just because <laughs> they are from France. <laughs> All of that. Wow. But, but, but I think 100 million would be a good price for Victor. Um, 100 million, 120 will be a good price. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's fair. And then Napoli just signed a brand new uh, signee. They got a new goalkeeper. He's, uh, I think he's about 26 or so. He's moved around quite a little bit. His name is Pierluigi Golini. Uh, I don't know if he's really going to be anything more than just an insurance policy for an uh, insurance policy for Medit. But we'll see. Um, I see the goose gone. He wanted to go somewhere where he could actually get some playing time. So we'll see how that turns out. And then the last thing just to talk about a little bit um, is uh, some of the Napoli gear that's come out recently. And what did you think about that Valentine's <laughs> kit, Omar? Did you want to come up? Did you want to come up to Victor and give him a big smoop so it matched his jersey? <laughs> that's, 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 it's a ridiculous jersey. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I don't. Uh, it's very laughing to actually. It's is it, is a somehow somehow also a reflection of the club and the, and the city. You know they're yeah. like jokers. It's a, the jersey reflects these people. Yeah, so no, so no, so no that's that's what you would call something like this you know it's adl yeah. blow, blowing a kiss to all the all the haters yes. and again and again <laughs> when you see the when you see the jersey you get the feeling that the ADL guy has absolute control over the club he runs yeah. the club like a like a pizza pizzeria <laughs> that's funny <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what pizzeria pizzeria adl the word pizzeria because pizza and Napoli are connected. If I was right. talking to a Nigerian, I would say it runs the club like a chemist because in Nigeria we have, we have chemists where people run, where people sell drugs, medication. <laughs> fake, oh. fake drugs. I was gonna say like breaking bad chemist or uh... <laughs> yes, yes. So you see, you feel that he's in control of everything. He just wakes up in the morning and says, You know what, Omar? I'm... At, I just, you don't know, man. Is he really making the final decision to put a big old smooch on a kit? Oh, I told, I don't I know, man. Victor's, I told Victor's girl. I mean, maybe. Hold on, let me say something. I, said, I told Victor's girl. I said you must keep that jersey because that kiss on that shirt is like Victor sending you a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I mean, there, there's some things that ADL does really well. You know, he keeps a checkbook balanced. He's oh, really got well. a good well. he's got very a very well. good um scouting team that finds gyms and it's he's true. good at a lot of things, but man, I just wish the marketing on that club would just pull their heads out of their ass and stop doing stupid shit like that. It's it's think, very, think, very annoying. Exactly. They don't run the club like a global brand where maybe it's not. Yeah. What it is a local club that is like enjoying local, some yeah. popularity. It's yeah, a very yeah. local club. Suddenly, it's becoming known because, of course, of their exploit, and of course, with Victor, Napoli is becoming very famous among black people, among Nigerians, among Africans. But generally, you feel that the club is local. Even the way the club is reported, when I go around the club and I see the media set up, you see that this club is local. You know, yeah, and mm -hmm. and and the way everything yeah. is done. Think, I mean, think, think about it. You can only big. get get the jersey locally. They're only distributed locally, and people always will ask why it's so hard to get it locally. Exactly. Yeah, they're only distributed exactly. locally. There. You don't see them exactly. overseas in stores. You, you see Juve, Milan, even, even Roma, exactly. Lazio. Never you Napoli. See, you don't see any random person wearing a Napoli shirt anywhere, maybe no. in New York. It's or, hard. It's hard in, to get it in, in, in Miami or somewhere. Yeah, you don't see that. It's, yeah. If you can't try the jersey on. What's the point? You might not buy the jersey. You have to yeah. be able to try it on. Yeah, you know, you yeah, have to yeah. see it in the window, see it on the hanger. Especially and... that material. It's very, very tight athletic material yeah. as well. They don't yeah. really make it for, like, the average person, I'm just saying. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe winning the Scudetto will be something that, that yes. convinces ADL maybe to – 
to open up a bit more. Yeah, yeah, I hope I so. I feel like someone will look at us, you know, Puma, Adidas, somebody. All right, Napoli Nation. Well, that's going to close up the show. Uh, Oma, thank you very much for coming on as a very special guest. Thank thank you. You. I thank appreciate you. it. I hope to thank see you, you soon you. in Napoli. And um, we'll okay. see you later. And let's go ahead and do this. Forza. Napoli sempre. Sempre.